Today, we are testing out a bare-bones basic version of the Selesnia enchantments list. Let's see how it goes. What is going on, everybody? And yes, as you can tell from my voice, I am still a little bit sick, but I am tremendously excited because last night we got to welcome our good friend Country Fried to the It Resolves family. He's officially streaming here on the channel every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Please do check all of that out. Hang out with him. Uh, great guy, great individual. It's really, we're, we're very fortunate to have him and his community uh, joining the It Resolves group. Uh, so please do check that out. But as well, I know I am sick, but we are going to try and push through and get some recording done. I want to try and get ahead because it's a busy week this week. So uh, what we're doing today is a Selesnia enchantments list. And the reason I'm pulling this list uh, is actually a pretty good one because in my opinion, well, not even my opinion, according to data, uh, it's actually sitting at the top of the metagame right now is one of the best decks you can play on the best of one ladder. Uh, and so I thought I would give it a shot. Normally, I don't play a lot of the like tier one deck lists. That's just not something I, I generally do. I like to play fun stuff and silly stuff sometimes. Uh, but every once in a while, I do like to pull an actual competitive list, we'll say. Uh, and this one is sitting towards the top. It had a very high win rate, close to 70%. I think it was 68 or 69%, uh, which is great. Um, and the idea is very straightforward. Play a bunch of enchantments and get a lot of extra value for it. Uh, now, to do that, we've got a number of different cards. Uh, Generous Visitor sitting in the one drop slot, going to throw some 1 1 counters around. Uh, we do have the Kami of Transience, which is going to get some counters as well. Uh, we've got the Reign of Truth, which is going to really bolster up our board. Uh, Weaver of Harmony, which gives everything plus one plus one. J uh, Jukai Naturalist, which is going to cheapen up the enchantments. We do have Katilda sitting as one of the bigger payoffs of the deck. Uh, and then a lot of the other pieces here are just kind of tech pieces. We've got Rune of Might. Uh, this obviously uh, strengthens up a creature, but it also draws us a card, which is good. Uh, the Circle of Confinement and the Borrowed Time working well as uh, removal options for us. We've got Commune, which is going to help us fill up our hand. Tamiyo's Safekeeping to continue uh, protection on some of these. And then the Wandering Emperor here sitting at the top for little bit of added removal or some first strike damage and some counters if we so choose. So a very straightforward list. This is not necessarily the Celestia enchantments list I was envisioning, uh, but I think it's a pretty good one. And so I want to give this a shot, a fair shot, see how we do with it. And hopefully we can get some wins. It is supposed to be a pretty strong deck, but I have not tested it at all at this point. So we're going to test it out as is and just see how things go. So Without further ado, guys, let's jump right in. All right, guys, here we are for game number one, and this is a pretty easy keep. We've got a really good start with this and the Naturalist, which can cheapen up the rest of our spells here. Uh, again, we'll see how good this deck is. Um, I think it's a little susceptible to a number of different things, but this is a pretty aggressive version of the list, and so I am excited to try this and just see what happens. Um, you'll notice we don't have any of the like hollowed haunting we don't have any red mana for this deck it's it's a very streamlined version of the list and so i'm curious just to see how this actually plays out go ahead and get the generous visitor down i obviously know this is probably a frustrating deck for a lot of people because we've had this around for a while and it's really kind of taken over the meta uh which is for good reason uh and so I do understand that this might be a bit of a, a trigger happy deck for some people, but uh, I do think it'll it'll end up hopefully being a, a fun one. So we'll see how things go. Uh, I do want to remind you guys again, like I mentioned early on, uh, this is really a big moment for us in the It Resolves community to have Country Fried uh, hanging out with us and streaming with us. This really is a big deal. Uh, and so I want to take the opportunity to just say a huge thank you again to the whole community uh, that is joining us here and hanging out with us. It's a really great thing to have another group uh, in the midst with us. And so we'll hopefully have a fun time. Hopefully, um, I'm going to actually spread the damage out a little bit here. Let's go this way. Um, hopefully get uh, a lot of awesome new people in the community. And so, again, guys, just be kind, be welcoming. We're here to have some fun and enjoy the game. And uh, we're luckily, we've got more people to do it. That was amazing. That was super quick. Let's jump into game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, again, this is pretty easy keep. Um, we've got the Generous Visitor turn one. We've even got the Kami of Transience here. So 
things should go okay. We've got the borrowed time, which we can use as a removal spell as well. So if we need it, we've got it. The opponent is pretty aggressively mulliganing here. I think they've gone twice so far. We'll see if they want to go even further. If they do, great. We, we should be able to punish a very uh, non... Uh, a, a slow start from the opponent. So we'll see how things go here. Uh, no clue what they might be on. Their, uh, their sleeves make me think angels, obviously. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. That also kind of makes me think angels. Um, nah, with blue, probably not. Alright, so... I'm just going to attack first. Let's go ahead and get the uh, the one damage in here. We'll just play the Kami of Transients now. Curious. So they probably do have an instant seed spell. I'm wondering if this is going to be like the Azorius Magecraft style deck, uh, which is a very cool deck, but we actually kind of just have the built-in answer with the borrowed time here, so that's fine. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and be very aggressive here because, again, they are very low on uh, resources, so... Might as well take the opportunity, go ahead and get that out of there. We bolster up the board a little bit and get in for five. I mean, so far, that seems really good. <laughs> uh, we do have another Generous Visitor as well as a Rune of Might here. We can't play both as it stands. We don't have double green available. We do have the Sands, the Blossoming Sands, but obviously it does come into play tap, so we have to consider that. Uh, guys, I do want to say a huge thank you. Uh, everybody has been supremely, supremely uh, supportive of the content that we've been creating recently. That means a lot to me. Uh, this has been a really big deal and a really long time coming, and um, it just means a lot to have everybody's support and everybody hanging out with us. Uh, it's a, a truly a pleasure to, to, to have all you guys here. And so thank you for taking the time to watch the content, to hang, it, to hang out and hopefully support in any way you feel you see fit uh it's it's really a special thing so thank you guys so much uh this is probably going to be a removal spell on the kami uh which is kind of fine they're spending all their time removing stuff which is not that good for them um let's do this let's go ahead and do this uh so we don't actually want to play this quite yet we kind of want to wait uh solely because the creatures can't just come in and attack, which would be awesome, but we're not there yet. All right, sick. So let's do this. Let's put one counter here so we can actually ensure that we can get an attack in. Uh, and again, I think we're just going to spread this out as best we can and then throw as much damage here as possible. And this is a lethal attack, so they do have to block or take it. All right, sick. We did it. That's two in a row. Very, very quick games, guys. Let's jump into a game three. All right, guys. Here we are for game three. And this is honestly the first hand that I just think we can't keep. This is really, really bad. Uh, so I will go ahead and throw that back. This is much better. I actually do think the land is what we throw back here. Uh, solely because we have a root of might, which can obviously help us draw cards. Uh, even that Spirited Companion can do the same, so I'm feeling okay about this position. We've got the Naturalist that can come down pretty early as well, so... Interesting. Very cool. Alright, sick. Uh, obviously we're just gonna put the counter there. Uh, I think we'll actually attack in. If they want to trade, great. It didn't. I didn't think they would, so I figured we'd go ahead and uh, run that out. Um, we. This is the Magecraft deck. This is a very, very scary one. They're probably going to get in for a lot of damage this time, uh, which is not ideal, but it's cool. Uh, we should be able to at least recover a little bit with the Naturalist, which is kind of nice. Um, alternatively, they could just not uh, attack and just leave up blocks. We are also very aggressive, so there is a world where that's the right call, uh, but I think they're going to get in for the attack. Yeah. Sick. Well, well done. They're going to go ahead and venture into the dungeon. Let's see what they do. Uh, this is a really interesting deck, by the way. This is one that I'd like to try. Uh, I just haven't had the time quite yet, but it's a very good deck. Uh, they did try to the bottom, which is kind of nice. And then they can dive. So they get in for four. Get to venture a lot. Uh, create a 1-1. One -one, that's fine. That really doesn't bother me at all. Uh... All right, so what do we need to do? Uh, we definitely need a land here if we could get it. So I'm going to start with the Spirited Companion. 
Let's put the lifelink uh, above the rest. Let's make sure that we're throwing that. Ooh. Uh, that could be really good. Uh, let's go ahead and throw the trample in there as well. Let's, let's really bolster this guy up. Again, we really need to hit a land. If we can hit a white source, we're great. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, we didn't. That's fine. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Get in for some damage. We do gain five life in this process, which is phenomenal. And next turn, we actually do have the answer to this. So they're kind of all in on this strategy, which is a good strategy, but ideally we should be able to uh, to deal with this pretty easily. Uh, they should leave up like a shield counterplay, like a boon of safety or something, I imagine. Um, but maybe they don't, I don't know. It, it can't be boon of safety now. Uh, but they probably have something, if I had to guess. Alright. Uh, worth noting, this now has Vigilance, so that is pretty important. Um, Alright. We're gonna venture as much as they possibly can. Uh, they do get to draw a card, which is good. And they can have again. Well, here's the open. No land. Uh... So, I mean, I think we just have to try for this. Uh, let's target you with the 1-1. One, one. Okay, they're going to counter it. Fair enough. Uh, let's do this. Put it here. Uh, unfortunately, though, we are kind of just dead. So, we can't really attack because this uh, just freely blocks and it does have double strikes so it's gonna deal with our creature before our creature can deal with it uh and it doesn't tap anymore we just didn't draw lands wow that sucks all right well done opponent they just get it let's go ahead and move to we got plenty of time we're gonna move to a game four guys let's see if we can get some more wins with this all right guys here we are for game number four uh again unfortunately just can't keep that kind of a bad start there uh this is better I think we just have to throw a borrowed time back as much as I don't want to. Uh, let's go ahead and play the green source here since we know it's going to come down as green. If we draw just a plain white source, we may decide we want to use this for, you know, a second green or something, but I think the play is pretty clear at this point. We just play the naturalist and hope for the best. Um, it is nice that that cheapens up the borrowed time. Chances are this gets removed pretty quickly here, if I had to guess. Uh, Blood Tide Harvester. Okay. Well, that's actually not that bad for us. Uh, do we go for this hoping? Yeah, let's do it. We're going for it, guys. Let's go. All right. Well, that was less than good. <laughs> uh, do we attack? I think no. We probably should have just borrowed time. Uh, to get the, the Harvester off the field. This is going to be a tricky one, because if they can remove the Naturalist, we're in a really bad way, uh, which they are kind of alluding to they should be able to here. Um, but we'll see. Um, yeah. Uh, not hitting a land drop there was a really bad thing. Um... Okay. So they get their 1-1. One, one. They hit us for one. That's all fine. Again, no. <laughs> hmm. Do we try again? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to go for it. We have to draw further into the deck. There's just no way we get through this without it. All right. Uh, that's helpful. That's really helpful. Um... It's not a second white source, which would have been, like, much more ideal, but uh, it is still pretty useful. Uh, I'm not a weaver. I'm being overly aggressive here, and I don't know if it's the right play, but I'm still going for it. We can borrow time at any point now, so I'm not as stressed about trying to get that down. I'm also not super stressed about our life total because we've got a 5-5 life linker, so we basically reset it uh, this turn, which is very good. I assume they can remove it, sure. Again, it's kind of okay. Like, we can solve that problem. Uh, weirdly, I'm actually going to block. Um, this isn't great, I know. Uh, but we're going to do it. 
I kind of want to get them to the point where they've got nothing, uh, which may or may not actually happen, but... Um, I did not play another one of these. That block might have been terrible. I have no idea. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Uh, we're going to get this guy built up and again, just draw further into the deck because I think that's just what we have to do. Um, not playing super well, I don't think, but you know what? That's okay. We're here to have some fun anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, I do really like this deck. This is a sick deck. All right, cool. Uh, this is also part of why I don't like borrowed time dealing with the anvils because they just get more anvils like pretty easily in this deck. They get those. So it's not really... I, mean, I guess they stack ish but like i don't love that all right uh at the very least they can't really get a free attack in though which is good all right so i think now let's just double check yeah i think now the play is to borrow time first which is gonna throw a one one counter here we'll get rid of an anvil uh specifically the untapped anvil uh, doesn't really matter, I guess, which, because they're just going to tap this in response. All right. Um, and then I will attack in here because they don't have a good way to, to block. So we are going to take some damage this turn, but again, we've got answers long term. Uh, and so as long as we hit our lands, we do need a second white source. A second white source would be amazing. Uh, getting Katilda down and being able to leave up a Tamiya's safekeeping to protect that Katilda uh could really be a big deal here's the Obnixilis. definitely expected this the uh the rakdos deck got a big buff with Obnixilis, so this is not a surprise at all uh do we discard a card i'm gonna decline i don't love it but i mean it is what it is yep take it through okay so we do actually get to just kill one of these, I suppose. The green source. <laughs> it's something, I guess. It's not great. We're really getting unlucky with land drops here. Uh, so we kind of just have to kill an Obnixilis, I think. Uh, these long term are just something we can't deal with. So this is pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, all right. Well, here's to hoping. <laughs> uh, this is definitely a rough one. Um, I'm going to decline again. I don't know. Part of me wants to get rid of the Katilda. Like, that's an easy one that we can flashback, which is kind of nice. And we do need the second white either way. So it's not like it'll... Oh, nice. Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, Tammy is safekeeping here on the big one. Oh, that doesn't even matter. That's fine. We gained two life out of the deal, so I'm cool with that. Hopefully we don't die. All right, sick. We didn't. Um, yeah, that's fine. We misplayed, but honestly, I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, yeah. It's been an interesting couple games. Um, cool. Man, we are just getting very unlucky with the uh, the land drops here. Yeah. Part of me is really happy we did the Tamiya safekeeping solely for the fact that gaining life there, I think, was really important. Um, because of this, we would have died that turn. Uh, so that's actually pretty crucial. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We're just not doing so hot. Uh, let's do this. Uh, yep. So we're gonna kill the anvil. Deals one. It's not game win yet. Um, if we can get a white source, we could get lifelink on the weaver. Oh, freaking what? Well, now we're just dead. Ah, uh, that felt so bad. Uh, okay. Well, you know what? That's okay. That was an interesting couple of matchups. Uh, I believe that was four games. Let's go ahead and jump into the wrap-up.
All right, guys, uh, those went really, really quickly. Uh, so I know that we were kind of fast moving through those, but I think that's the nature of the deck. It's a very aggro-y Selesnia deck. And again, a very streamlined version of the deck. I think there's a lot of different versions that you can run, some with the Hollowed Haunting, more of a mid-range package. Uh, some bringing in the Naya color scheme so you can get the red in there uh, and with that red you can actually do quite a bit as well so I think there's a lot of ways you can run with this one I just wanted to try this one out this was towards the top of the meta uh, and so I did take this deck from Aether Hub uh, as a suggestion just because I thought it was a really interesting one uh, and it was good I mean for the most part it did okay uh, it did not do well when it came to lands <laughs> Uh, that was a big problem, so I don't love that. I would maybe play around with that land count just a little bit. Uh, maybe it was luck, I don't know. But regardless, that was really our only problem. I think if we had had lands, we probably could have been at least better off, for sure. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty easy statement to say, but I think we would have had outs to potentially winning, so... I was hoping for that, but we didn't- we didn't get there, and that's okay. Overall, it still did okay. Uh, so I like it. I would highly recommend trying this one out, guys. Uh, it's a very fun deck, uh, and it, it makes sense that it's at the top of the meta right now. Uh, regardless, though, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to check out uh, Country Fried stream here on the It Resolves channel later today. Cannot wait for that. Uh, but thank you guys so much for all the support. Again, I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys again very soon.